last couple of days, Andrew Breitbart and his big government uh, organization has, has tried to uh, engage in a, a, a campaign to discredit Occupy Wall Street. Can you talk about that, talk about that whole uh, strategy of his and what, what you think it, it shows? It shows that the man has no character. It shows that the man is unscrupulous and he will do anything to achieve the goals for which he's employed. I strongly believe that the reason that these guys don't want to talk about big banks, he doesn't have a website that says big bank or a big insurance or a big war machine. He's interested in busting working class people because that's who they that's what they pay him to do. And to me it says exactly what an unscrupulous, creditless clown that he is, that he's still given the respect in the media is a sign that the media is very complicit in the misinformation abroad. I mean, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but he started a smear campaign against Mr. Olson, who was the Iraq war vet who was shot with a rubber bullet in uh, Oakland. I mean, come on, man. The guy served his country. He fought for his country. He came home to see a country ravaged by corporate greed that broke promises to the soldiers who fight for this country. And the fact that when this man was injured, Mr. Olson was injured in a serious way and he's still recovering. I wish him a speedy recovery. But the fact that he was injured and the first thought these guys had was how to tear him down says exactly what black-hearted monsters they really are. So, uh, what is Occupy doing about about that uh, uh, as far as the movement? I mean, what do you want to see uh, come out of the uh, uh, of the movement with regard to the media specifically in this in this case? You know, it's really funny. Uh, what we are doing in and of itself is counteracting the media. I mean, we don't necessarily have to make it our goal to counteract the media. They are proving how irrelevant and how skewed they are by their reporting. And there are honest people in the media. I don't want to, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater. There's some people who are doing some very honorable work, and I'm very grateful for that. But at the same time, the people who want to ask inane questions, the people who want to waste our time, we don't have time to waste. People are hurting. Instead of asking me questions about how does this end, or what are your goals, why not do the job you're supposed to do and make people aware? You know, there are so many statistics detailing income inequality, so many statistics detailing how corporations have just unlimited resources to bribe our politicians, but they can't manage to put together decent wages or decent jobs. And I think if they started reporting that information, it would make the facts very easily to very easy to understand, and it would allow us to further this debate. Because in reality, we're talking about our future, but if we cannot address the inequalities and the realities of today, how can we move forward to tomorrow? So, you know, I, I keep in my heart pleading with those people who have power in the media to do the job that they are supposed to do, instead of asking questions about, you know, do you agree with this fact or do you not agree with this fact? Let's state a fact as a simple fact. Let's state the obvious truth that wages have been in decline or stagnant since 1980. The wealthiest one or five or 10% of America has seen all the income gravitate towards them as the rest of us are suffering. These are very obvious facts that every working class person knows whether they have the statistics available to them or not. Let's do the service to our countrymen that we are required to as being faces in the media and let's make those facts knowledgeable and therefore we can go forward. Because if we're going to sit here all day and debate nonsense like socialism or fascism or end all the regulations or end all the taxes, if we're going to keep up with these nonsensical platitudes that the majority of America has no patience for, then we're not going to go anywhere and we're going to go nowhere together. I want to go forward together for everybody, even those people who don't support Occupy Wall Street yet. Even those people who are detrimental to Occupy Wall Street yet. If you're the person that really does not like Occupy Wall Street, I still like you. I still want you to have a good wage and a good retirement. I want you to be able to spend time with your children and get education for them and get a quality home for them. So, you know, I'd like to express to those people who may not feel that they have something in common with us, that they do because we're fighting for your future too. Thank you.